Good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing today? Today is February 1st, um, 2019, and it is in bulk, which is um, the coming of spring. Um, you know, just to put it simply, actually, there's a lot more to it. It's usually like honored um, by lighting candles in your house, it's um, bringing in nature, honoring the warmth and the sun, um, honoring springtime and all that stuff. So, it's a good time, it's a good day. Feels good out today. It's kind of chilly, um, it's been snowing this morning. Um, I haven't made a video in the past couple days because um, I had been going through some things and I just didn't want to put that kind of negativity out. Um, it seemed like every time I opened my mouth, I would cry. But that's, it's not, I'm fine. Like, I don't need sympathy. I don't need any of that. Like, I know that it's just like feelings that come and go at this point. So, um, I try not to hold on to them. And I try not to think about it too much. Um, yeah, so... But anyway, how have you guys been doing? Um, I just wanted to say something really quick. Um, I Maybe I might make a whole video on this. I'm not really sure. But I just wanted to say that um, on the whole toxic masculinity thing, that after doing some research and watching more videos and um, seeing that stupid ass Gillette ad that I had not seen prior to making that video, like believe that or not, I didn't even know about that thing until later on that day. And, um, it was just that, that was me coming from a place of like a mother and my fears of raising men. Um, because in my family, uh, specifically and, that's where all my experience comes from is my family. Um, there's a lot of broken people in my family. A lot of, almost all the men in my family are broken. You know, they all have um, a lot of issues. Um, and those aren't inherently male issues. You know, those are human issues. So, um, I just wanted to let people know that, like, my stance on that is... it's not really there, you know, it's, it's, it's more of me of like fearing how I'm going to raise my kids, you know, like I, I don't, cause like you don't know what to do as a parent, like you, you get, you know, like the expectation, you know, like the guidelines, but there's like nuances, there's things that like maybe you didn't expect and, and, you know, things that pop up that you weren't prepared for and that you didn't go over in your head a zillion times because you're a fucking woman and that's what, women do. So it's, it's just things like that. It, it wasn't like a judgment placed on men. It was like, um, it was just my fears, you know, as a mother and as a, a woman raising men coming from a history and a long generations of messed up people. You know, it's, it's a scary thought to think that you could be next in that, in that line of fuck ups, you know, like I don't want that at all. Like I strive to be like the only handbook I was given on parenting was what not to do. That was it. You know, I didn't have any, um, and I'm not blaming this on, this is not a blame. This is like me speaking of a, from a place of, um, just trying to figure myself out, trying to figure this life out, trying to figure out parenting, trying to figure out how to be a good mom, um, trying to figure out how to be a good person, you know, it's just like all that stuff compiled on top of itself, and sometimes it comes out the wrong way because I'm an emotional, super emotional being, um, sometimes things come off the wrong way, and I apologize, but, um, you know, just like having that fear of knowing, um, what's come before you and having that fear of, I mean, and it's not a fear that's like right here in the front. That's like always on my mind. It's kind of like a, a blanket that like covers 
all facets of my life. Why is this not focusing? Okay. Um, it's like a, a blanket that covers all facets of my life. Um, it's like... That the like I said, the handbook I was given on on everything was just what not to do, how not to be, how not to act, how you know it was never I never had role models and I never had people who I could look up to and say, "Man, I wish I could be like that person, um not in my physical space, like yeah, I had like idols and like you know movie stars that I looked up to, like everyone does, but like most people have, in their physical reality, they have somebody that they can say, like, man, I wish I could be like that. But I didn't have that when I was younger at all. Never once did, did that type of person come into my life until I, I left, until I said, you know what, enough's enough. I don't want to live this way. I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to act this way. I'm out. And that's what I did. I left. And... It was, like, one of the best decisions I've made, you know. Yeah, I live 4,000 away, 4,000 miles away from, like, everybody I knew and grew up with and everything. But, like, you can make family anywhere. Like, I came down to Virginia where I didn't know a fucking soul. And I didn't even know where it was on the map until I moved down here. Like, I had no clue. Because, you know, when you're, when you grow up in America at least, um, you're only taught about the country, or I mean, the state you live in, mostly, I mean, you're taught, like, broadly about the other states, but mostly you learn about the state you live in, and especially when <laughs> growing up in Alaska, like, you, I learned so much about Alaska, just, you know, from being born and raised there, and uh, like I said in previous videos, I know a lot of my internal struggle comes from ancestral trauma. Um, it comes from um, things not being worked out in past generations. This is just what I believe. Like, if, if you believe something different, that's cool. Like, just tell me down below what you believe. Because it's cool finding what other people believe, you know. But I just believe for myself, for my life, that... Um, the traumas that I, and I'm not like trying to place blame because I don't, these are things that I feel internally that I don't express um, to anyone in my life. Like I just don't talk about these things because I have a habit of um, when I talk about super emotional things to people around me that um, they kind of like overtake me, you know. Uh, I start to cry a lot and I just, I can't really get out what I'm trying to say to a person. Um, but the things that I don't express and the things that I deal with personally and internally by myself, um, I believe that they are unprocessed traumas, both from my life and from past generations um you know that's it i believe that is possible you know there's that thing epigenetics that where like trauma changes your genetics you know that's like i haven't i have to look more into that because someone did leave a comment about that and i have been like researching like gene pools and like all this cool stuff about like just who we are as people and it's crazy how um mixed we all are I mean, we're all so mixed, like, you, with the invention of these, like, home DNA kits to find out what your genetics are and what your ancestry is, is, is crazy, because my, my ex-husband's, um, family, they are white, they're from the South, you know, they're just white people, just, all of them are white, there's not a single, they're, like, tan, but, like, they're not, you know, they're not any other race, they're, they look white, you know, just like me, I'm a white person, I look white, they look white, okay, well, in the summer, they get really, they tan really, really dark, and two of his brothers, they have super curly hair, and, um, it's just a different texture, you know, you, if you felt, uh, textured hair, then you know what I'm talking about, like, my hair has no texture at all, it's completely flat, blah, boring, dull, but, like, a, you know, somebody with more melanin in, in them or somebody from a different culture, they have, you know, quite different hair. My son, who is half black, he um, 
he's got different hair. You know, his is, uh, it, it's like my ex-husband's brothers. That's like his hair. He, he, they have like mixed hair. Um, and so I always had like an, a feeling in the back of my mind, like maybe they have like an ancestor somewhere down the line that was African American. And, um, come to find out they do. Um, my, she's actually my best friend. Um, she's my ex-husband's niece. Um, she's like 24 and, uh, we've been friends for a long time. She just did her ancestry test and she's, she's got uh sub-Saharan African in her. So, I mean, that just goes to show you that the whitest person on planet Earth, because she is white as hell, they they can have different cultures in them. Like, it, it's not, like, we come from such diverse people and such diverse settings that none of us are, like, just solely one thing. Unless you've been in, like, everyone in your freaking whole entire family ever has been in one spot for the whole their whole existence, then yeah, you probably can say that you were just one thing. But most of us, if not all of us, on this planet are mixed with something. You know, like all white people have Neanderthal genes. Like if you didn't know that, now you do. Um, because, you know, the, the Europeans, the first ones anyway, were Neanderthals. So I've got Neanderthal in me. That's pretty cool, I think. I have like a subspecies DNA in me. I think that's pretty cool. Um, you know, it's just it's just a reality of things, and it's it's actually really awesome because if you drop all prejudices and you drop all judgments and you drop drop all stereotypes and assumptions, you learn that we're all so alike. We all f have fears and loves and dislikes and likes, and we all have our favorite music, and we all like what we like that does not mean we have to hate each other for those just because there's different dislikes it's like it's always been that way you know and it's always going to be that way but we need to to approach those things with love instead of hate judgment anger jealousy any of those things like before any of those emotions because if you feed into that thing those things you are giving into the very thing you say you're against and I think people should just be aware of that. Like, you know, I'm definitely aware of the things that I think about and the things that I let stagnate in my mind. Like, that's why I have journals upon journals upon journals. I mean, look, this is my most recent one. This one's all the way full. Look, all the way to the back. Like, I'm telling you guys, like, all the way to the back. From front to back, this journal is full. Okay. And I do this so thoughts don't stagnate. What is going on? I do that so thoughts don't stagnate in my mind and cause bad things to happen inside my body because that's what can happen. That's like people always saying, oh, he was so young and so healthy. How did he die so early? He just up and now he's gone. Well, think about it. If you are constantly, uh, you know, if your health and your... Your, your just whole drive in life is to keep your whole entire body so healthy so you won't die. And that's your intent is so you won't die. You will die. Like, we're all going to die. That's just a given. But you cannot live your life centered around the thought of, if I do this, I, I'll die early. I won't die as early. If I do this, I can be I can live longer. You know, you just have to go through life like just taking the hits as they come and just keep going, keep pushing through all those obstacles that are placed in your way. Just push through them. You know, they're put there for a, a reason because if you, if, if you are presented with an obstacle and you don't push through that, that obstacle is going to continue to get placed in front of you. It's just going to continue to happen unless you deal with it, unless you stop it and say, listen, okay, this isn't my life. This isn't what I want to be. And so, you change it, you know, just that's that you change who you are. You change the thought pot process. You change the thought pattern. You change the daily behavior because if you can change the daily behavior, you can change your life over time. You can, because just, just think about it. Think of the last 10 years of your life. Everything's different, isn't it? From 10 years ago, it's all different. 
But to, in the daily grind of things, we don't feel the change. But then as soon as we look back, we realize how different we are. So you have to be really conscious of your thought process and what you're doing on a daily basis because that leads to change what you or, or stagnation you know just you can go either ways on the spectrum so just be careful keep the thoughts in your mind positive um keep your judgments towards people and yourself mostly um at a very very minimum um and if you do have those judgments express them in a nice way just say hey you know what i have this judgment and i don't think it's right i don't think this is why did you know, question why you think things just because you think them doesn't mean it's not it's your it's your thought doesn't mean it's that's you you know it's just like a thought it's a it's a um it's an idea it's not a held fast uh you know defend to the death belief so if you guys um want to chime in on any of this and let me know how you've been doing what's been going through y'all's mind um if you guys have any cool ancestry in your in your lineage um you know leave it down below let me know because i think that's so awesome i think we're all beautiful as people and we all need to learn to love each other more and just like, be more accepting and stop trying to place the blame where it doesn't belong so if you guys like my video, um, please, you know, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, whatever. If not, that's cool. You know, catch you all around, whatever. See you later. Love you guys. Bye.